Hello, this is Therese Plummer, and I am here to answer a few questions. What's your favorite way to spend a day off? Without a doubt, absolutely positively 100%, putting my rescue pup butter in the back of my car and driving to a mountain and hiking and watching him navigate the trail and helping me navigate the trail and learning so much from him and nature and the quiet and the sun shining or the rain falling, which was the case the other day. That's my absolute favorite way to spend my day off. What was your favorite age growing up? I would have to say three years old. And I know that that's really young to remember anything, but I do. And that is when I remember having such a vivid imagination and living in worlds that my brain created and it was spectacular. It was absolutely amazing. Uh, I don't think I had background music yet, but I was full in fantasy. (laughs) Um, My mind was a beautiful escape and an absolute treasure chest. So I would say three, three or four. What was the last TV show you binge watched? (laughs) So I'm a huge true crime fan and I bought a membership for Investigative Discovery Channel and (laughs) I have bought the last five seasons of People Magazine Investigates. (laughs) And I also get People Magazine, so I read the true crime stories, but then they also do a show based off of each story. So I am hooked. And I really enjoy eating gummy stars while I watch. My husband thinks that I'm pretty morbid, but he never says anything. (laughs) He just slowly opens the door and is like, everything okay in here? you find out new ways that people get killed yeah so those are that's what I watch people investigates on investigative discovery what song always gets you out on the dance floor I would have to say like R-E-S-P-E-C-T or like any kind of disco classic disco funky with a beat just it doesn't even matter like all those lame songs that you hear at a wedding my ass is on the dance floor just going nuts crazy usually high on wedding cake (laughs) high on wedding coffee and wedding cake and then just working out my sugar rush on the dance floor but yeah all those all those uh oldie but goodies oh yeah and like bon jovi like just like crazy crazy stuff though i'll get a headbang in there too and have a full sore neck the next day i should probably stop while i'm ahead So I love this question. What activity instantly calms you? And my answer is breathing. And I know that seems so simple and maybe even trite. I don't mean it to be. Inhaling and exhaling instantly calms me down. I didn't even realize when I was a teenager, I used to hold my breath. And I was like, why am I so stressed out? Why do I feel so anxious? And I like literally was holding my breath. And then when I learned that I was holding my breath and how to breathe through yoga um, and therapy, (laughs) it was like a total game changer. It was amazing. Oh, I love this. What movie can you watch over and over without ever getting tired of? And if you don't know what movie, what montage I am humming the theme music to, you gotta get with it. Any of the Rocky movies, I can watch and rewatch and rewatch and rewatch and scream and cry and just go on the journey. Even though I know how it's gonna end, I like lose my mind. Rocky IV is an all-time favorite, but it's the training montage scenes that just freak me out. They're just so good. They're so inspiring. (laughs) That's it. I'm a Rocky fan. 
What food is delicious but a pain to eat? I would have to say, oh my God. I feel like no food is painful to eat. But wait, I totally get the question. I would have to say like, if I ordered a fish that had bones in it and I had to like spend most of the time like kind of picking the little bones out, which has happened once or twice, which was kind of a pain. I think it was at a Greek restaurant and they brought the whole fish out. But it, it was worth it. It was worth the deboning because the fish was so magnificent. Yeah, honestly, I would eat anything. I don't really, I don't really, I, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to, no pain, no gain. I'm willing to go through whatever it takes. What old person things do you do? My nickname for my friends that my friends have for me is Grandma Moses because I, of all my friends, go to bed at like nine o'clock and my husband calls me Mosey, <laughs> G Mosey. <laughs> but I'll tell you, when you're recording books and like having to do all different characters for six hours a day, like sleep is my best friend. That's like l the main thing that keeps my instrument working. And also I'm just like tired, I'm really tired. The world's a hard place to live in recently, so sleep is awesome. What was the last photo you took? I just took some really great photos of my dog Butter and I hiking at a state park in New Jersey. I think it was a reservation, Ramapo Reservation. And uh, I got that fancy iPhone 11 Pro and the pictures are redonk. I'm portrait mode. It's like super profesh, I love. What mythical creature do you wish actually existed? For sure, dragons. Absolutely, positively, without a doubt. I would love that. <sighs> yeah, dragons. What are you interested in that most people aren't? <laughs> what are you interested in that most people aren't? True, no, people are interested in true crime. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, it, I'm sure there's other people on the planet that are interested in this, but I am very interested in just living the best life I possibly can on a daily basis and seeing where I can be of love and service and just trying to stay out of my crazy head and uh, nutty thinking. And then sometimes going in there and maybe writing a story like I did when I was three. But yeah, just, just, uh, I'm definitely motivated and inspired to just live my absolute best life and just be like the best little human being I can be in the 24 hours I have. What outdoor activity haven't you tried but would like to? I wanted to say bungee jumping, but every time I see somebody bungee jump, I can't help but think they've got like massive whiplash. Like they're free falling, free falling, it's so cool. And then boom, it just, you know, and their whole body like whips back up. So that doesn't, that was appealing, but it doesn't feel appealing. I have jumped out of a plane, which was amazing, surreal. Maybe hang gliding or windsurfing. That would be dope. I don't feel the urge to surf. My husband does, but I don't because Jaws has haunted my dreams since I saw it at 10 years old, and I'm full-fledged afraid. What songs hit you with a wave of nostalgia every time you hear them? Anything from a John Hughes film. But my favorite is from Say Anything, the Peter Gabriel song, In Your Eyes. I mean, that is full flashback adolescence. I mean, I remember what boy I was pining over. I remember like what outfit I was wearing. I remember what scrunchie I had. I remember like, oh my God, John Hughes movies and the soundtracks. It's like my whole adolescence, the best. What languages do you wish you could speak? I wish I could speak French and Italian. I've been able to um, speak some of those languages in books I've recorded, and they're so beautiful. And Italian is by far the most fun language to speak, in my opinion. I love speaking Italian. I don't know how. I just read the words, 
and hopefully have a director teach me how to do it right. But uh, it is, I don't know why, it's like a party in your mouth, like all of the words, and it's just like, you just you see like a big bowl of rigatoni and a bead the ball. Oh God, I'm making myself hungry. What's some insider knowledge that only people in your line of work have? Oh, secrets. What's some insider knowledge that only people in your line of work have? Maybe that if you eat a Granny Smith apple, that like pasty sound that drives people crazy when they listen to audio goes away. And also a pillow strapped to your belly muffles (laughs) the hunger pangs or just the digestion that's occurring. And last but not least, recording audiobooks is really awesome and really hard. So please be kind when you review the books because it's really hard and we do our best. All right. I think that's it. Thank you so much for making me your narrator spotlight this month.